I've been sitting on this article for a little while now. I've mentioned it a couple of times, but, well, there's been more important things to talk about, and to be fair, as important as it is to have this conversation quite early, now that we are seeing the turning of the tides, it's hardly the most important of things to worry about right now, but this is an opinion piece from Fox News saying, Online porn should be banned and it's long overdue. And here's the thing. We have been spending the last half decade plus now whining about left-wing censorship because it has grown to be practically endemic. It has infiltrated pretty much all of the institutions, it has worked its way into the online social media sphere and the internet as a whole. The majority of social media or content providing platforms like YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, etc. are all run like de facto gulags, where wrong speaks will at best get you shadow banned or flagged and were simply thrown off the platform. In an age where more and more people are actually developing these things as professions, that is a big, big problem, not to mention the inherent issues of censorship that follows hands in hand with it. But, and this is the big old but, as the pendulum begins to swing, as I am firmly of the opinion that it has to at this point, we are going to see an almost equally sensorial movement on the other side of things, because you remember back in the day, the good old days, when the worst thing we had to worry about in terms of online censorship was the likes of Jack Thompson? <laughs> the thoroughly inefficient ambulance chasing, uh, radical Christian kind of things? Well, those are still a potential threat if the pendulum swings far enough. And the earlier we get onto the field and say no, we say no to censorship full stop, the better it'll be for everyone, frankly. Now, personally, I gotta say, if I had to choose, I would prefer this form of censorship over what we have currently because, well, <laughs> here's the thing, a right-wing censorship tends to be kinda shit at what it tries to do. And hey, if I have the option between an inept censor or one that has gotten frighteningly good at it, mm, it's an obvious one. Nevertheless, Let's have a look at this, shall we? For 30 years, we've let the internet harm children, society with porn. So this is based on the idea that porn is inherently damaging to society. And hey, I agree. In large enough quantities, literally everything and anything is damaging to society. Freedom is damaging to society if left completely to its own devices and to its extremes, in which case we get simple anarchy. And currently, porn is very easily available, and we are still in a generation that hasn't quite, well, figured out how to deal with it. And honestly, porn is a symptom, it is a secondary concern of a much greater ill that ails the West. The reason why porn is a danger to young men these days isn't really the fact that it is porn. We as men are biologically engineered to, well, want to jack off a frighteningly uh, frequent times. Frequent times. That was a sentence of some sort. Anywho, porn is simply a method to do this. The issue is we have created a society where the balance of, well, the sexes is so thoroughly skewed towards one side that the other gender, the male gender, has in many cases been downright traumatized from even trying to enter into relationships. Have a look at Japan, for example, for a bigger example of how that one's worked out. With plummeting birth rates due to the fact that most men just simply can't be bothered to even try dating. But anywho, that's a wider topic, so we're not going to get too into that here. What I'm about to suggest will seem bizarre, true, maybe even impossible, correct. But hear me out, the United States should seek to ban hardcore pornography from the internet. Most obvious reason to do this is that children are inundated with an avalanche of smut. We learned in a 2019 study from the British Board of Film Classification that 51% of 11 to 13 year olds also have seen pornography online. I don't doubt it. Hell, go to Google right now and search for tits and you'll be, well, as uh, to borrow the term, inundated with it. It's not difficult to find pornography, and the few countermeasures that we have put in place are, well, ineffective. But is the thing. We do have things like uh, age limits, for example, so little pop-ups on the sites going, hey, are you sure you're 18? Click yes to agree. <laughs> They're stupid, and they don't work for obvious reasons, but 
the issue is, what more can we actually do? That's the problem. We could go full China and just you know, tattoo QR codes into people's heads so as to make sure that the computer can scan them for correct compliance, but beyond doing that, there's really no way of checking if the person in front of the computer is 18 or 8. That's kind of the problem. This means tens of millions of very young children are watching hardcore pornography because we as a society, frankly, without much thought or discussion, have decided to allow it. Now, that's a little bit misleading. We have had quite a lot of thought and discussion about this. In fact, pornography in generally, well, the reason why we have age limits is because children aren't supposed to be watching it. We just haven't come up with a good way of regulating it on the internet beyond, you know, making it the parent's responsibility, which frankly is the best answer, because if young Timmy is browsing for pornography, somebody hasn't put a good security system on that internet browser. And hell, most of them these days comes with blocks and filters, and if there isn't one inside your browser, there's probably a thousand apps able to do that very self-same thing, requiring a password to unlock certain search terms or websites, for example. Now, bearing in mind I'm pulling that one a bit out of my ass, but I'm thinking that probably exists. Hell, it exists on the television, so why shouldn't it exist in Chrome or in app form? You know, if I'm wrong, I'm stupid. For 30 years, we have treated the internet like it's for some reason untouchable by the state. Oh, this is the good part. This includes social media and big tech censorship as well as porn. The internet intersects with our daily lives so wholly now that this Wild West approach is simply no longer tenable. There is actually no reason why an information a superhighway can't or shouldn't have rules of the roads. Rules that protect kids from obscenity or stop important accurate stories about laptops, for example, from being erased. This is where we get to the interesting part, and that is the fact that a lot of the arguments being made here try to kind of veer inside of the current paradigm whilst arguing for the opposite of it. So the Biden laptop, should it have been suppressed? No, obviously not. It was clearly, blatantly, a political move made by the media to get the person they preferred into office. That is simply no other way of viewing it. However, what you are arguing for here is the exact same thing. Oh, we shouldn't suppress information, but we should suppress this. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, here's the thing. Your argument is that pornography is damaging to children. All right. I guarantee you the precise same argument, except with the children part being changed, was being made by the left when they suppressed the Biden laptop. They were saying to themselves, Trump is a danger to the West, to democracy, to America. If we need to suppress this, so be it. In fact, it is for the common good that we do this. We do this not because we want to, it is because we need to protect something greater. It is the exact same rationale now being used on the other side. And of course, we do have some rules regarding child porn, fraud, and defamation, information than a few, but when it comes to pornography, our society has been oddly permissive. Again, not actually true. And now, in America, it has been more permissive because it has a very strong constitution and freedom of speech. There was a case, um... I looked this up recently, but there was a case where the Supreme Court basically said that no, you can't make obscenity a state law because it violates freedom of speech. Now the weird part there is of course that obscenity is a federal law, while still apparently being in um, you know violation of the US Constitution. I haven't delved enough deeply into it to understand the logic behind that, but the US has been oddly permissive. <sighs> oddly. Again, I don't really think pornography is a particularly big problem. In a functional society, pornography is not an issue. And I'll tell you what, here's the issue too. It is simply so popular. It is one of those things you cannot ban because people want it and people need it. To uh, make an American example, the ban on alcohol, for example. That one uh, didn't work out particularly well, did it? Because, well, people wanted it. And so a booming business of providing it was created. The same would and has happened for pornography. Over here in Norway, we... <laughs> I was about to say were, but let's be frank here, are a ridiculously puritanical country. To the point that pornography was only made legal in Norway in 2006. <laughs> Now, there's been varying degrees of illegality up until that point. There was a period where we were burning erotic books in the streets. 
<laughs> and then we, you know, just introduced censorship and stuff, but it's been illegal to a varying degrees or another up until, what, like 15 odd years or so ago. And the thing was, people still wanted it, and so there were people who became millionaires in providing it. A famous example was a man named Purnu Hagen. He had figured out that, alright, well, people want porn, and there's a massive market for it, and nobody's providing it, so I'm just going to pop on over to border to Sweden, where it is legal. I'm going to buy literally a truckload of pornographic VHS tapes, drive them back across the border, and sell them at a ridiculous markup. And that's what he did. For years, he would just buy ridiculous stacks of pornographic magazines and movies and then sell them. He got raided by the police over and over again. Everybody knew he was doing it. They confiscated truckloads of this shit. And yet still, he died with um, like a hundred million kroners in the bank or something. <laughs> like he was rich of this. Because every time the police came over and seized everything... He was right back on over to Sweden the next weekend to pick up the next load, and it flew off the shelves even quicker. It's simply something that we will devour in tremendous quantities. There are predictable objections to banning online poor and even limiting access to it. Armchair libertarians... Throw hands thrown up say there's nothing we can do to stop young kids from watching it. Well, that's not entirely true. We, we will, well, yes, kind of. Like, there is no way you stop a modern-day 13-year-old with access to a smartphone, or friends, or a school, or, well, anything, from getting access to pornography one way or another, unless you completely ban it off the entirety of the internet. And I do mean the entirety of the internet. Otherwise, they just pop on a VPN and hit it up in Germany or Russia or whatever other place. How can you even define it? They asked. The Supreme Court has its famous and vague, I know it when I see it standard. Well, that's actually been a problem with defining pornography in the US. It's a bit silly, but hey. But it can certainly be defined. Well, to a degree, yes. This is not an epistemological epistemological excuse me, quandary we need to surrender to. As to free speech, people are free to make porn, but they are responsible for where it goes. Again, we are echoing the left-wing position, aren't we? Oh, we're not going to stop you from me. You are free to say whatever you want, just like we're free to cancel you, get you fired from your job, perhaps getting you prosecuted for saying things. But you can say it, you just can't have to deal with the consequences that we are going to actively ruin your life as a bunch of activists would. Yeah. Again, the same problem. We are told banning porn is impractical. Correct. People will find a way around it, and of course, that's true of every law we pass them anyway. Now, that is a fair point as well, but this isn't guns. This isn't, hell, even hard drugs, which you could probably ban at least some of, even though, like, again, the, um, well, the, the most effective way of dealing with marijuana was to make it legal, as now more and more marijuana shops are running out of business because it's no longer a taboo, and so people will smoke it occasionally if they like it, but if they don't, eh, they won't care, really. Finally, we are told that this is up to parents. Yes. If the kids go to libraries or schools or have friends in this year of the parents, we have learned they may do not want to co-parent with the state, but they also see the need for state action to protect kids, such as bans on drag shows for them. And yet again, we are making the same argument. Oh, we, we don't want the state to have any power over our kids, but we do need the state to protect our kids. Once more, it is the exact same argument as the left will make. The left isn't censoring you because they're evil, they're censoring you because they just want to protect you from the evil Trumpalophagus. <sighs> there was also an argument, um, it was, I think, uh, about age. Ah, yes. Um, but there's no, uh, no a priori precept that says porn needs to be widely available for free with no age verification. That's true, but what is the example of no age verification? Well, it is a Virginia teacher charged after child pornography allegedly found on Snapchat account. That's the thing. This wasn't a porn site. This wasn't something that acquired uh, age verification. This is the same as handing it out in the street, in back alleys, or at the air back end of shops. It is one person using a thing to give porn to somebody else or store it somewhere else. It's, it's not an age verification problem. Now, does the internet make it easier? Sure, but again, you're not going to stop that unless you turn absolutely ludicrously 
draconian in the enforcement of it, like absurdly so. We will have to reach China levels to get this. And it also cannot be compared to, say, for example, the uh, the control over social media, which you referred to earlier, which I can't find right now, but like controlling social media. It is not the same. Controlling social media is simply a question of enforcing already existing legislation. They are supposed to be platforms, not publishers. And all we need to do is go, all right, well, you have made an editorial decision here. It is obvious that you have made an editorial decision. You are claiming to make an editorial decision. And so we're going to slap you. It is actually that simple. Whereas enforcing a porn ban... <laughs> You'd have to literally lay a net on the entire internet. You would have to trawl through it with bots to make sure that pornographic images are not available. Then you'd have to have the discussion of what is a pornographic image. Is a picture of a tit a pornographic image? How do we delineate this versus medical texts, for example? Do we have specific exemptions? Do we have a database of these exemptions? Now what about the criminal pornography, like revenge pornography or child pornography? Do we have separate databases for those? How do we enforce it? Do we just have a blanket ban? Do they have a right to appeal? Can they say, hey, this isn't pornographic? Do we have agents? Do we need to make entire agencies to deal with this? And bear in mind too, here's perhaps the best argument against both this and the idea of, for example, Lolicon, which I hate the idea of Lolicon being illegal because it is a drawing, it is a picture, it is a .jpeg, it is not a child. You cannot traumatize it, you cannot hurt his feelings, you cannot damage it, it causes no damage to you or society whatsoever, it is a figment of somebody's imagination and obviously so. And when you do make it illegal, what you have done is create more work for the people that need to enforce this, the police, that would otherwise need to deal with actual sex predators with, oh, you know, like the example up here, like, um, uh, anti, oh yeah, sex trafficking, or a possess a minor online to catch sexual predators at the host of undercover underage, etc. Now, this is important. The police should be focusing on stopping actual crimes like sex trafficking or underage pornography instead of wondering, worrying about pornography as a whole. That's the issue here. It is a question of priorities. It is extraordinarily difficult to police even something as obviously illegal as child pornography on the internet. So how on God's good earth do you suspect we should police all pornography? Again, you gotta pick your battles at some point. But the overarching point here is, as I mentioned, there is censorship advocates on both sides and they tend to use the exact same argument because they want to achieve the exact same thing. They just want to target different things. The goal and the methods are the same. It's just that the targets may differ somewhat. And the earlier we realize this and gird ourselves for the inevitable arguments, the easier it for time will we have to finally, perhaps for the first time, although un unlikely so, stop the pendulum in the center. One can hope, can't we? Anywho, let me know what you think about this uh, in the comments down below. I, uh, I'm interested to see how many um, more right-leaning people I have versus the more centrist-leaning, because I've already always considered myself to be fairly well, smack dab in the center, frankly, on these, these things. It'll be interesting to see. And, uh, you know, how do you feel about it? Would you have a better idea how to censor online pornography that wouldn't require, you know, QR codes in people's heads or little chips in the back of one's neck? <laughs> Which uh, would be a wonderful thing, to be sure. Or, you know, whatever else. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.